Okay, so I want to do an Fe type question where we use the Hayes and Williams equation and the Manning equation as well. So these will be two questions that we will solve step by step. So we will begin by using the Hayes and Williams equation to determine the flow rate. So in this case, we're told that a smooth concrete pipe carries water at 20 degrees Celsius between reservoirs A and B as shown in the figure below. So we have reservoir A, reservoir B, and we have a smooth concrete pipe this pipe that carries a certain flow rate. it carries water the pipe carries this water at 20 degrees celsius so neglecting friction losses the flow rate in cubic meter per second is most nearly what so we're trying to determine our flow rate which is what our q value right in cubic meter per second and we're going to use the hazen williams equation for q to solve the flow rate because we're given the hazen williams coefficient our C value for different pipe materials specifically for concrete in this case and if we read the question carefully we have smooth concrete pipe we have a smooth concrete pipe so we're going to use a Hayes and Williams coefficient of 140 this will be our C value so we can determine the flow rate by using the Hayes and Williams equation once again and we can refer to this in the FE Handbook 10.0, the new FE Handbook. It's going to be on this page, and it's going to be one page 184. So we're going to use this equation for the flow rate. You can also solve for the velocity, if you choose to. Then you take your velocity times area. You can get the flow rate using the velocity as well. But we're just going to skip that step and solve for the flow rate. In just this using this equation so if we do exactly just that we can begin by writing the equation so our flow rate Q equals to our it's gonna be our K sub 1 times C our coefficient is 140 right the Hayes and Williams times a times the hydraulic radius raised to the power of 0 0.63 times the slope raised to the power of 0 0.54 so using this equation our flow rate Q equals to our K sub 1 value and the K sub 1 value should be the 0 0.849 so we're looking at SI units it's gonna be this value in the handbook for SI units so don't can, don't get confused there. This is for USCS or English units. This is for SI units. We're working in meters. So we're going to use that value for K sub 1. And on that note, we'll plug that in. It's going to be 0 0.849. Our C value, we concluded for the smooth concrete for this pipe here we're told it's smooth concrete the Hayes and Williams coefficient is going to be 140 this is typically given to you or they might give you a table where you have to extract that out then the area is going to be the area for a circular pipe in this case so it's a pipe and it's going to be pi d squared over 4 the area of a pipe so we take pi times the diameter squared so what's the diameter in this case it's going to be what's given here. So this will be our diameter. It's going to be 4.5 meters. So we do times 4.5 meters. And this is going to be squared, pi d squared over 4. And all of this is going to be multiplied by the hydraulic radius. So the hydraulic radius specifically for a circular pipe, we take the area over the what it perimeter of the pipe so if we use the handbook once again we can refer to this portion so we take our area our cross-sectional area of flow we're assuming full flow here so it's going to be pi d squared over 4 divided by the what it perimeter which is essentially the perimeter of the circle of the pipe so it's going to be pi times d so denoting that, if we carefully write that down, 
our hydraulic radius is gonna be I'll do it here area over the weighted parameter so our hydraulic radius is gonna be the radius of the flow of the pipe flow so it's pi d squared over 4 the area of the pipe flow sorry over the perimeter what's touching the pipe so it's gonna be the entire perimeter of the pipe it's a circle so it's just gonna be pi d pi times the diameter so if you reduce this we know we can reduce this further because these would cancel this is 2 we have a coefficient of 1 here 2 minus 1 is just gonna give us d so we're just gonna be left with d over 4 this is usually the case when you have a pipe that's a full pipe that's a circular pipe flowing full when the pipe is flowing at a full capacity we're gonna use d over 4 for the hydraulic radius for a circular pipe so we plug that in here d over 4 our diameter is 4.5 meters and we do over the 4 and this is raised to the 0 0.63 right don't forget that and the slope is gonna be the difference the head difference divided by the total length of the pipe so if I write that here let me just put it here the slope is gonna be the head difference difference over the total length of the pipe so the head difference in this case we take the difference in elevation so this is at an elevation of 120 this is at a elevation of 60 so we take the difference between these so we're gonna have this head difference here and it's gonna be this and you just do 120 minus 60 and it should give you 60 meters so that's our head difference and the total length is 5.5 kilometers we have to convert this to meters right so you take 5.5 times 10 to the 3 or you move the decimal over 3 spots so 1 two three so it's gonna be five five zero zero meters so don't forget to convert that unit to meters so we take 60 over 5500 for the slope so this is 60 meters the head difference over 5500 meters and for that that would be our slope and if I do the math there I got 0 0.011 so it's going to be meter over meter which is the appropriate units and it's going to be the slope so we're going to plug it in here so it's 0 0.011 meter per meter and all of this is raised to the 0 0.54 so we have everything plugged in now we can solve for Q and we should at the end get our units in cubic meter per second and if you do the math for this you should get around 177.7 cubic meter per second so our answer here would be D around 178 so that's using the Hazen Williams equation let's do the same example using the Manning equation so if I come down here and here we have the same case same scenario same exact numbers but the only difference now is we're gonna use the Manning equation we can see how the flow rate is gonna differ slightly so here typically you're gonna be given the Manning's L n value for the roughness and in this case we're gonna be looking at smooth concrete so we're gonna use this for our n value and the Manning equation is provided in the FE handbook as well it's gonna be this one so we're gonna use this equation in the FE handbook and it's the same procedure we take our K over N but K is gonna defer here it's capital K and we're gonna have our N value and the rest is gonna be the same the area the hydraulic radius and the slope so on that note we can use the Manning equation now and let me write that down so we have q equals our capital k over n 
times our area times the hydraulic radius raised to the power of two third times the slope raised to the power of one half. So now we can solve for Q. Q equals our K value for the Manning is going to be 1.486. This is given in the handbook. 1.486. Our N value is this one. So it's going to be 0 0.011. And we're going to have the hydraulic radius. It's going to be the same from above. So we take the area over the what it perimeter. So it's going to be this D over 4, the diameter over 4. So it's going to be the 4.5 over 4. That's the hydraulic radius. The area is the same as well. And the slope. So the slope we're going to use the 0 0.011. So we're going to do just that. And the area is going to be pi times the diameter squared. The diameter is 4.5 meter squared over 4. The hydraulic radius is going to be our D over 4 for a circular pipe flowing full. So it's going to be the 4.5 meter over 4. And this is raised to the power of 2 thirds. Don't forget that. And then we have the slope. It's going to be the head difference divided by the length. And we determine this to be 0 0.011 meter per meter from above. And this is raised to the power of one half. So I think we have everything. We can solve for Q. And we get our final units to be in cubic meter per second. And you should get around 163.35 cubic meter per second. And this answer using the Manning equation would be B. So we can conclude here that when we use the Manning equation, our flow rate is going to be lower given the same conditions for the Manning equation it was around 163 cubic meter per second for the Hayes and Williams equation it was around 178 cubic meter per second and that's all hope that helps